I don't know how to run a business that needs to perform financially every 90 days because I'm a marathon runner, not a sprinter. You got your perspective. I just wanna be happy, don't you wanna be happy? Hello everyone, I'm Andy Serwer. Welcome to Influencers and welcome to our guest, Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary, great to see you. Great to see you. Although I should say our host because we're here <laughs> at your building in Long Island City, so thank you for having us here. We're thrilled to have you. So let me ask you this very basic question. Sure. How would you describe yourself, say, my six-year-old nephew? What do you do? Um, I'm an entrepreneur. You know, at, at its most purest sense, I am an operating entrepreneur. Um, who happens to put out a lot of personal content of that journey. So there is some awareness of who I am as a human. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm an executive of uh, uh, several companies that I uh, run. Uh, Vayner Media and the Vayner X holding company of agencies and service providing companies is really, really, really what I do. Um, and. Uh, that's it. It's not super complicated other than the fact that I decided that it was in our business interest and in my own curiosity of what would it be like if you documented and produced content at a scale that had never been seen before around an executive. Right, right. What, what would it have looked like if Ariana Huffington, when she started the Huffington Post, what if she put out five to 10 pieces of content a day in podcast, vlog, and content across all the social platforms every day of the first six years of that journey? What would that look like? And that's what I decided to do. I mean, in a way, it's kind of timeless, like the entrepreneur part. On the other hand, you couldn't do what you do today, say, 20 years ago. Not only that, I didn't do what I do today when I ran my first company. Right. When I kind of took the reins of my dad's liquor store in 1998, I think you know the, the cynical part of being so out and about is the showmanship, the narcissism, the self-promotion. I try to remind people, I'm like, look, a lot of times the accolades that I get in business today, people pass off as, well, he's internet famous and that's why it's happening, so it undermines my operational and executive skills. And when I get sad about that in a debate or a conversation with a friend or a foe, I, I try to remind them like, look, I was a 22 year old kid who from 22 to 28 grew a business from three to $60 million a year and I didn't make content. I wasn't on the internet. I was an operator. Yeah. I was a marketer. And so, yes, you're absolutely right. Not only could other people have not done it in the past, I already lived an entire chapter of building an entire business that had nothing to do with having a personality attached to it. I was just the operator of. Yeah, it's pre-internet and you know, yeah, you needed your social skills but you were operating, running an operating business as you said. But let me ask you, you've got 5.5 million followers on Instagram, 1.8 million on Twitter. How do you do that? I mean, I always hear people, oh, you just create content and you sit there but I, it, it couldn't possibly be that easy. Well, it's definitely not that easy. That would be like saying, how do you become a professional basketball right. player? You just play basketball. Like, how do you become... Do you need talent in? Yes. So what's the talent? By the way, let's stay here for four seconds because yeah. it's a huge platform and I think we're about to help a lot of people. The number one non-conversation going on in today's society around influencers yeah. and other things is the talent part. Mm -hmm. Like right. ta Now, talent comes in all shapes and sizes. Your talent may be that you're a model. You're just very attractive. That's me. Right? No, you that's know that, not me. Right? Okay. Yes. Or right. a comedian, right. or an athlete, or a thought leader. I do believe that education and entertainment are the two pillars. Uh, but yes, I mean, you know, back in 2006, I started making wine videos on YouTube. In 2007, I aggressively put out content on Twitter. Had the things coming out of my mouth not been interesting to people, I would not be sitting here with you right now. It's not super complicated. Most people have taken some version of an attempt to become somebody people know on the internet. Most people. You know, there's a set that's very private. Most people have taken a dabble yep. into a LinkedIn article, into a nice photograph they posted on Instagram, into a single YouTube video, a couple clever tweets. Most people have tried. Right. So what's the secret of, of making people engage with your content? I mean, it's, it's just empathy. smarts, empathy, okay. Empathy is the secret. I believe I sit at 
where I am in Lexicon, which is I think a winning player in today's new environment because I'm empathetic to my audience. I put out content that brings them value, not makes me feel good about myself. Right. How many posts do you put up a day in Insta and, and Twitter? Are the, and those are, are your two main platforms? Those are the two main platforms that I myself completely control. Mm-hmm. Uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube. I've, over the last three to four years, amassed a team of content creators, media amplifiers, strategists around my content. But I fully control Instagram and Twitter and I put out four Instagram regular posts and probably you know anywhere between three and 25 tweets a day. So, um, that's a lot. The, uh, by the way, big shout out to you and your team because the train going by now, the fact that you guys didn't stop it. I'm so pumped right now, yeah. I'm fired up. Right. Like, we I, wouldn't stop for that. If my phone rang, we wouldn't stop. You know, I love like, that. That's like old people, old school stuff. But that is an evolution in content yeah. creation. Yeah. Like it literally just took note, I'm like, oh I like yeah. these, uh, yeah. good job, good. go. And that's empathetic. Um, so how does the business model work? Like, so explain your company to me. Is it Vayner Media? Is that the entire business? Vayner Media was the first company for about six or seven years. And and like, this is Vayner one. Yeah, I mean that's just inside oh, that's stuff. Just yeah, yeah. Okay. That's an inside okay. stuff for us. We have fun with that. But uh-huh. Vayner Media was the first company. After building up Wine Library and then after being an investor in Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr and having kind of Silicon Valley success, I decided to start I decided to start the agency with a premise that eventually I would want to buy nostalgic and historic brands. And I would run them through my progressive consumer centric marketing model. So I started an agency. It it grew very quickly. Now there's something called VaynerX because two years ago I bought purewow.com, a women's lifestyle brand. Yep. Uh, we started a men's brand recently called 137 PM. Then we started a speaking bureau six months ago called Vayner Speakers. We started a company in January to service small businesses because Vayner Media is made for Fortune 500s called the Sasha Group, named after my dad, which is fun. Um, we have a tech platform called Tracer that is uh, evolving in a separate company. So now there's a Vayner X holding company. And very honestly, it's really no different than Publicis or Omnicom or WPP or for people who are watching, it's just Mad Men 2020. Right, obviously, I haven't watched the show, but I assume what they've had on the show, it's a heck of a lot culturally better, but right, you know. Right, 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 um, so, so right. It's does, an advertising agency. Right, so the business model works like you have Fortune 500 clients, like give me some names. Chase, Budweiser, Pepsi, okay. Hulu. And they pay you money Service to fees to make campaigns. pictures mm-hmm. and videos on the internet and on television. Uh, Planters Super Bowl spot this year Mm -hmm. was made by this production company that we're in uh, and ideated creatively by VaynerMedia. We are paid to make pictures, videos, written words, marketing collateral. What's unique about VaynerMedia in today's world is under the same roof, we also then are the media agency that places the media. We buy the ads on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Yahoo. We do the execution. That was the way it was done in the 60s and 70s. The same people that made it also bought the television. Then they separated them. And now most agencies either do creative or media. Vayner Media does both. I mean, a lot of people say that ad business is dead. The, the legacy companies, I mean, certainly they're under a lot of pressure. Is this sort of a new model, a good I think way so. to do things? Yeah, I, I agree with the street and the business pontificators that the old model's in trouble, but I don't think it's necessarily because they didn't have media and creative under one roof. I believe it's because they were publicly traded companies and they had to make their own numbers and when you're a service provider, if you only care about your EBITDA and your stock price, your clients eventually are gonna feel that. And when they feel that and they feel the negative effects, I, I actually believe there's an incredible book to be written, similar to like Barbarians at the Gate, of what the four or five biggest holding companies in the world have accomplished in the last 25 years, which is through consolidation, they have basically extracted the value out of the biggest brands in the world. If you look at the biggest brands in the world that have used the publicly traded agency model over the last 20 years, they've declined mm. while the agencies have grown. Only now are they starting to decline because the cat's out of the bag because the biggest brands in the world are starting to look at Vayner and other independent alternatives and that's bad for the holding companies. So you wouldn't necessarily look to go public? 
I, I'm incapable of being a CEO of a publicly traded company, so no, we will not. Yeah, you, maybe Elon Musk should have said something like that at one point. You know, right. I don't know Elon well enough and I know he's a character. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not incapable because I want to curse on video. I'm yeah. incapable because I don't know how to run a business that needs to perform financially every 90 days because I'm a marathon runner, not a sprinter. Right. That's kind of refreshing to hear that you don't necessarily need this payout, but you don't need that for your employees. I mean, it's all, I mean, there are a lot of private companies that have been around for decades and decades, right? That's exactly you don't right. You have to go public, right? No, I don't need, I don't want the cash infusion to buy a boat. I want to enjoy running a company and I need independence as a entrepreneur. And so I'm not willing to give up my independence for $400 million up front. So you were running a liquor store yes. and then the internet happens. I mean, how and when did you realize that the internet was gonna revolutionize, let's just say, the business of communication? October 1994. You have a date? I do, I'll tell you why. October 1994 was the October of my freshman year of college. And in 1991 when I was in high school, that's when I started becoming passionate about my dad's liquor store and I said, I'm gonna open 150 of these. I'm gonna open the Toys R Us of liquor stores. I remember being a high school kid thinking. And then in October of 1994, I went into my friend's dorm room and discovered the internet. And within 10 minutes, I found myself on a baseball card bulletin board on AOL and I saw that people were selling. And I'm actually, they're not gonna see it, but you're gonna see it. These are literally goosebumps. goosebumps. That's that is right. goosebumps. This is real goosebumps and I'll tell you why. It changed my life. I can feel, you know, you know how, I mean, I'm really getting them right now. I feel that, that's, that's legit. That's legit. <laughs> so, so I'm excited about this because it was a really transcending moment. Like I was, I'm a weird kid, meaning I was a true entrepreneur. I was ahead of my- 94 was early, but that was before um, Netscape. Way before Netscape. I'm not short of timing. Yeah, yeah. But Is that was, right? Yeah, I believe you. You were an AOL bulletin board. Yep, right. yep. Mm-hmm. And I just remember thinking, this is it. I don't know what to say. I was like, this is it. And literally, you know, two years later, because it took a little bit of time, I launched winelibrary.com, one of the first e-commerce wine businesses in America, and it changed the course of my family's wine business. So how do you build an online brand? Uh, Easily. Um, You produce content on the seven to 25 places where people pay attention, um, and you produce it around things you know, and you amass awareness. I mean, it's no, how did Nike build a brand? They ran commercials. They did sponsorship. Like, it's just attention arbitrage. Hmm. Where's what does the, that mean? For me, it means my career, uh, oftentimes I reference Mariano Rivera when I talk about my career. Mo. Mo. Mm-hmm. Mo was one of the great closers in baseball history. And at the Bobby end. Knows that. At, Yankee and so you're gonna appreciate this. But. He had one pitch. He was solid at everything else, but he had this one pitch, and besides Edgar Martinez, literally nobody could hit it. Uh, and that's who I think I am. I'm good at other things. I'm a good COO, like I can operate, that's why I have businesses. I'm very good at HR, I'm good at PR. Like I'm good at other things, but I am, rem- I, this is now me talking about myself, but I, if you ask me, I think I'm remarkable at understanding what humans are actually doing before the masses understand they're doing it. Right? I understood that online dating in 2001 was gonna be mainstream. That wasn't obvious until 2011, right? Or 13 or whenever Tinder really took hold, right? And so what I mean by that is I built Wine Library on the back of email and Google AdWords. Mm -hmm. In 1997, no liquor store in America thought it was a good idea to build up an email newsletter versus the catalog that they could send in the mail. Got it? Right, yeah. In 2001, I bought every Google AdWord for every wine term and mm. nobody was bidding me up. Right, got it. Got it? Yeah. In 2006, this is now documented, thank God. In 2006, I started a wine show on YouTube in February 2006. I was one of the first people to move fast on Twitter. I have podcasts and LinkedIn, like I'm right. consistently first. Right. And that skill has allowed me to be good at real estate. Right. Somebody yeah. bought up all of Dumbo. Yeah. Somebody once bought up most of Malibu. Like, some people see it. Right. I see human behavior. Okay, so what do you see right now? Voice. What does that mean? That means that everybody in this room and everybody who's watching this video is gonna do a lot more things with Alexa and Google Home and Apple Pod than they think today. Like what? Order every single food 
that they eat. All of it. In 13 years, you will mouth in your office, in your home, you will say, send me a burger, or can you get me a Shake Shack, or I wanna, whatchamacallit bar. Um, get me my Sprite. Quinoa. That's right. Even. I want a quinoa salad, and this is where branding comes in. I want a quinoa salad. If you say that to Alexa, Amazon now has a lot of leverage. What quinoa salad are they gonna send you? Their own private label? Is some brand gonna pay $500 to be the affiliate? So you better say, I want sweet greens quinoa salad, which is why brand is about to become so much more, brand has always been the most important. Brand's about to become even more important because we're going to an audio-centric lead gen world, not a visual-centric. It's gonna be very big. Sounds like you think Amazon has a lot of upside here. I sure do. Yeah. Unless the government gets involved, which I don't know that stuff, that's just not, that's above my pay grade, I would buy Amazon stock in perpetuity until Jeff Bezos no longer runs the company. But Amazon, Google, Facebook, Twitter, they have a lot of advertising power. Does that concern you that they've got so much of that pie? Of course not, because CBS, ABC, and NBC had that whole pie, because the New York Times and the Washington Post had all that pie, and Yahoo at one point. I mean, there's always somebody that controls the pie. And always people whining about it. That's right. Microsoft should have been broken up. IBM should have been broken up. Google like should be broken now. Like, it's the same old game. But should they be broken up, Facebook? I I don't think so. Mainly because I think that there's always another young Turk coming up and she or he is gonna destroy Mark Zuckerberg because Mark Zuckerberg becomes passive, because Jeff Bezos becomes passive, because Bill Gates becomes passive, because people become passive. Right, they become content, they become... Content, old, curious in other things, different parts of their life, sick, die. This is run by people. Yeah, yeah. So we're in Long Island City, we just talked about Amazon. Yes. Uh, what did you think about that? Was the city right to like boot them out or activists right to boot I'm them so out? I'm so pumped you asked this question. Good, let's talk about it. I have no idea. <laughs> Come on, man. You said you wanted to talk about that and you're punting. I'm not punting. Okay. I'm, I'm, the reason I just got so excited is as a guy who speaks with heavy conviction, which could come across as audacity or ego or overconfidence, nothing excites me more than when I'm interviewed when I actually don't know the answer to something and I can say I don't know. But that's just it. So why don't you know? That's the follow-up question. Because I'm not willing to do the homework of the collateral things that happen after the fact, right? I don't understand the actual math around, my intuitive nature is when the greatest company in the world, or definitely in America, Mm -hmm. wants to set up shop, that that has trickle-down value prop. What I don't know is the concessions that the state or the city does, and the arguments on both sides of the equation properly and possibly have com- like, you know, actual value to them, I just haven't taken the time to dissect it. Let me give you an example. Mm-hmm. I believe that TV advertising is grossly overpriced. Right. I also think that the Super Bowl is the number one best buy in marketing. Mm-hmm. So that's a contradiction within the micro of the macro. That's why I can't answer the LIC. I don't know. Right, right. Well, what do you think about politicians like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez who says, that we should have more government involved in terms of people making higher wages? You know, it's an interesting question. You know, I was born in the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. So I laugh when Americans try to paint, you know, liberals as socialists or communists because that's Americans that haven't lived in communism. Right. So here's what I would say. I am stunningly socially liberal. Mm -hmm. Uh, At the same token, I'm an alpha entrepreneur and believe in many of the things of capitalism. What I don't like is when capitalism gets old, aka an alpha gets old, and then she or he tries to use their money to change the rules of merit. So I'm disgusted by that. At the same token, I have many 20 year old kids hitting me up and saying, Gary, you're rich, you should give me your money. So I'm very scared of the slippery slope of massive entitlement. So, you know, more government involvement doesn't hit me well in my alpha player on the field, I'm an entrepreneur. It hits me tremendously well as I'm the human being and I want everybody to be healthy and happy to the best of our abilities. I think the answer is always somewhere in between. The, the, the biggest problem I have, listen, I'm willing to give up 95% of my earning. I really am, yeah. let's go to taxes. It may be getting close to that in this state. 
I'm willing to. I just want to be the one who gives it away. Mm, mm-hmm. Right. Wait a minute. I'm going to work my face off, bleed in perpetuity, and I'm going to give it to you, and you're going to decide who got 36,000 votes. Like, let's, 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 yeah. let's, like, and you've never operated anything in your life, and you're third generation wealthy, or your ideology, and you have no practical skills. Like, this is not about giving away money, it's about giving away money to people that have no idea what to do with it. Like, that starts where it gets a little complicated. So, I want everybody to be awesome and happy and healthy, and I'm willing to pay unbelievable amounts for it. I just want to see how you're gonna spend it. Right, right, right. Um, Shifting gears a little bit. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. Well, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people do. But very few people actually pull the trigger and even fewer succeed. What are the barriers there? Talent. You know, that's disheartening. That means you're just like, you're born, you can either play in the NBA or you can't. No, what, what, you know, that's a very good point. I think it's the following. My brother AJ is a better basketball player than me because he's put in more work on his left hand and his jumper, mm-hmm. so he deserves it. He's not in the NBA. <laughs> you can be an entrepreneur. The problem is we've lost sight of being an entrepreneur who makes $137,000 a year doing what she or he loves is an amazing life. But right now everybody thinks they're gonna be Mark Zuckerberg. So we've become audacious and ludicrous and delusional in our entrepreneurial uh, ambitions. And so I think we need a level of self-awareness. I think people are trying to be entrepreneurs at a level we've never seen before because the cost of entry of saying that you're an entrepreneur in your Instagram account is very easy. It's also cool right now. I'm actually quite scared about that because I don't want to be the face of that because I think 95% of people are going to fail, especially when the economy fails. Let me say something straight to camera. If you're not a successful entrepreneur right now, in the easiest time to be a successful entrepreneur because there's so much money in the system and the internet is at scale, you suck. (laughs) All right, that's some tough love right there. It's the truth. This is the easiest time in the history of life to be a successful entrepreneur and if you're not and you're struggling, then you're not an entrepreneur. Listen, I'd love to be playing for the Jets and the Knicks or be opening the Grammys. It's fun, sounds rad. Mm Just not capable. Doesn't mean I can't sing better. Doesn't mean I can't be a better football player backyard in Central Park. You gotta put in the work and you have to be self-aware of your upside. The other thing is we have too many students who now think that entrepreneurship is cool. If you weren't selling lemonade and baseball cards or pogs or burning CDs and flipping them in school, like if you don't have sales DNA or operational DNA or it wasn't fun to play store when you were five, you didn't gravitate it towards it naturally, you're gravitating towards it now because it's cool. Right, and I take it you did all those things. All those things. Right. And, and so did so many of the people that are successful that as entrepreneurs. True. Right, yeah, yeah. The same as singers went to choir. The same as actors signed up for the thespian club freshman year. Right. Like it matters, the work matters, the talent matters. What about... Um... You don't get to wake up one day and just say, I'm gonna start the Uber of bananas. Right. Like, it's just crazy what's going on out there. Like, just the greatest generation of fake entrepreneurship we've ever seen. Yeah, and that's because of the internet. I mean, right? It, yeah, it's, the co- it's right. so easy to just... Right. And it's, it's cool. Because right. it's cool it's and cultural. it's... If, if, if us said, we're gonna, be, we're gonna be rappers, that's cool too, but very quickly we have to prove if we can rap. I'd be like, cool, rap. And then you can't, and you're like, you're not a rapper. Right. I could say I'm gonna be a professional basketball player. Well, I say, I'm gonna be a basketball player. I'm like, cool, show me. You can't prove to somebody in one second that you're not an entrepreneur. Right, right. So let me ask you about being, about speaking. Okay. You do speaking, right? I do. Motivational speaking, you could call it. I mean, do you feel, do you, are you concerned, Gary, that it's manipulative? Of course. Of course. But I don't think I'm manipulative. Uh Uh-huh. I think that people want to make me an, motivational speaker, but I'm not. If you go watch one hour keynote on YouTube, right. listen to what I'm saying. Right. I'm not talking about the secret. Mm-hmm. I'm not, ta- like just listen to the words. I'm motivational in my DNA. Mm-hmm. I'm a rah, rah guy. I'd be a great high school coach. You know, I know how I come off, but I ask anybody who wants to throw that cynicism at me to go read the transcript of what I'm saying. Right. I am the most practical, immigrant operating person you will find. There is no delusion in my optimism. Right. There is no delusion in my optimism. 
It's funny that you asked me that question based on the last six minutes of this interview. If you think about it, right? It makes me happy the way it went. I don't think the last six minutes were like, hey, I'm gonna manipulate it that it's so easy. I'm desperately trying to tell people this is super hard. I'm equally saying, how lucky are we that we can even try? Our grandparents couldn't start a company after hours on a phone. Right, yeah. This is the greatest era of the at bat. You're not guaranteed to hit a home run. Right, right. This is the greatest era of the at bat. That's cool. That makes me happy. There's a lot of people struggling, paying for college loans, and they get home at 7 p.m. and I'm saying to them, let me motivate you to not use Netflix and 2K and beer to escape your problems. Let me motivate you at 7 p.m. to spend the next five hours to build something for yourself on Shopify or eBay or Instagram or YouTube to get you out of your situation. Got it? Got it. It's practical. What? I actually believe that my natural showmanship DNA, yeah. my shtick that is my DNA, grossly undermines what I'm doing. People really? think it's why I'm successful. I think it's undermining my what upside. Because uh, people just say you're all form and no content. I literally threw up in my own mouth when you said I was a motivational speaker. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't want to do that. You, you didn't, but, okay. but I'm telling you a very important truth. Yeah, okay. I've, I've, I get it and I understand that I look that part but I continue to push people to listen to what I'm saying. Right. How and I you, can't change, what, right? I, I've, okay. I'd love to be lower but I'm pumped. That's who you are. So how do you prioritize, how do you choose what you do? How do you allocate your time, number one? My admins rule my life. I've, I, I, I literally had no clue we were doing this just now. We're doing it. I'm aware. Like, and, like, she walked over. She's like, "You ready?" I'm like, "Okay." I didn't even know it was the Yahoo one. That you know, the, like, I'm I, my calendar rules my life. Mm-hmm. Me and my team are thoughtful about what we book. Right. Um, I spend the far majority of being the operator of Vayner. Right. But I do use my personal brand as a top of the funnel awareness to drive my business. Right. Right. So bringing value for you know, I'm, I'm filming this for my own content, bringing it value to your platform, and then the serendipity of somebody becoming aware of me, digging in, then looking, and if, so I do use my personal brand as a top of the funnel business development tool for my businesses. Where do you want to take this? I mean, you know, it's the old, where do you see yourself 20 yeah. years from now, Gary? But I mean, it's important. Right? No, no, because it's a very important. I, 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 I like being thoughtful of what I'm doing professionally. Yeah. You know, the two things that I'm most excited about are the continuous journey of the ambition of trying to buy the New York Jets, <laughs> which is my absolute professional really? goal. That's I right. Mean, is that seri- are you serious about that? As a heart attack. Right. Yeah, it's been my goal for my whole life. Do the current owners know this? Are they aware of this? You know what's funny? I'm not sure and I have no interest in wasting their time because I'm not anywhere close yet to the financial level that I need to be. Um, probably do. I put it out there quite a bit. Um, and my path to that is to build VaynerMedia, to build the greatest marketing engine in the world, to then buy historic brands when the economy collapses. So I want to buy Tootsie Rolls or uh, Reebok or, and then I want to become the CEO of that. So I want to buy something in the next decade for two to 500 million. Then I want to run it for a decade and then flip it for three to five billion and buy the Jets. And then I want to make content that leaves a positive legacy in allowing people to, you know, at least use me as a context point this is how I'm doing it. Take what works for you and, um, and play some legacy on the content. Wow. That is well thought out and clearly defined. I appreciate it. How do you see yourself using your influence on the world? It's kind of at your core. I believe that in 40 years, people will realize during this period of time that I was one of the few unique individuals who had the ability to penetrate 15 to 25 year old young men and was able to reframe their mind of not being as into watches and private jets and models and cash but made them start respecting things like patience and gratitude and empathy and kindness and that I will be far more revered after I'm gone for doing it than I'll ever be while I'm around doing it. Gary Vaynerchuk, thanks so much for talking with us today and thanks for having us here. Thank you. I'm Andy Serwer. You've been watching Influencers. We'll see you next time. Great.
That was super cool. I love it. Thank you. Really, really interesting. Thank you.